Now let's look at mycobacterium. Now mycobacterium basically is a is a is a group of bacteria uh, which consists of species which are highly 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 infectious in nature. Okay, so uh, you might have already heard of um, uh, tuberculosis as a disease or leprosy. Okay, so those are diseases that are highly infectious, uh, highly communicable, and they're actually caused by bacteria that are found in this um, group. Now, so in general terms, or uh, looking at the characteristics, the mycobacteria uh, are basically slender and normally they are rod shaped. So they are typically rod shaped, but their rod uh, shape is not like that straight. There's some curve to it. So they're slightly curved. They don't have flagella. So therefore they are non-motile. So uh, mycobacteria are non-motile and they are usually aerobic. Okay, so actually strict aerobes. So basically they actually survive in, in, in an environment um, in presence of oxygen. Um, so um, another thing that is very important is that um, mycobacterium uh, stain very poorly with gram stain. And we'll look at the reason why. And therefore they, uh, they actually uh, tested or basically stained using a different kind of uh, stain that does not take up um, acid or they are not decolorized by acid. So that's why they're called acid fast. So, and what leads us to that um, uh, scenario is the issue of their cell wall. So the cell walls of uh, mycobacterium are a bit um, unique because they have the cell wall, yes, and a peptidoglycan layer, yes, but on top of it, they have a very high content of lipid and waxes actually, which is made up of what we call a mycolic acid. Okay, mycolic acid, which uh, is found on top of the cell wall. So this mycolic acid now, therefore, um, is able to set this group of bacteria apart from the normal kind of um, <clears throat> bacteria uh, that, that would ordinarily just have this peptidoglycan layer. Now, if you remember you, um, the normal um, cell wall of a gram positive bacteria, you just have um, a very thick peptidoglycan layer. And nothing on top, nothing like an outer, an outer membrane. Uh, the gram negative one has the outer membrane. Now, this ideally would have been a gram positive bacteria if it were not for um, the mycolic acid or the, the wax and the lipids that are on top of it. Okay, that's why it stains a bit with gram staining, but not the best because it is hampered by this uh, mycolic acid that is on top of it. Okay, and actually that's where we get the name mycobacteria. Okay, <clears throat> now, um, now they can, we can classify these bacteria as basically based on um, two classification. One, based on how fast they grow. So we have rapid growers bacterium and slow uh, growers uh, mycobacterium. Then they can also be classified, and this is an old kind of classification that is called the U1 uh, classification, where it looks at the kind of pigmentation that the mycobacterium produces in different kinds of, of environments. So whether there's light, whether it's in darkness and so on and so forth. <laughs> okay, so, um, Based on um, the classification, based on um, the rate of uh, growth, we can have rapid growers um, mycobacterium. Basically, these are bacteria that are um, actually able to form col colonies. If like you're culturing them um, or, or on agar plate or somewhere, uh, you can actually be able to see them with naked eyes uh, in less than seven days. So actually, it takes less than seven days for them to actually form colonies that actually can be observable by the eye. Okay, and that's why they're called rapid growers. <clears throat> okay, so the rapid grower bacteria basically are the atypical type, um, or what we call non uh, tuberculous mycobacteria. So, example here is Mycobacterium uh, fortuitum and uh, Mycobacterium smegmatis, normally found even on glass. Okay, then we have uh, slow growers uh, mycobacterium. So, these ones, uh, these ones will take more. Than seven days actually to form colonies that are observable okay so basically this take a longer time and this actually is the class of bacteria is the group or the classification that contains most of the mycobacterium that is uh, detrimental to human beings so examples here include mycobacterium bovis okay <clears throat> mycobacterium tuberculosis we know about that mycobacterium leprae and mycobacterium africanum Okay, so this class of uh, mycobacterium are regarded to as slow growers mycobacterium. 
Then if we are to classify it based on the pigmentation, as I told you earlier, this was on an old kind of uh, classification. Um, this one was based on it, on the um, <clears throat> yellow pigmentation that was being produced um, by the bacteria, mycobacterium, um, whether they are exposed to light or darkness. So if the, the, the bacteria is actually, the mycobacterium is able to produce um, the color, uh, the yellow color, basically the yellow pigment in light, in the presence of light, those are called photochromogens, okay? So examples here are like uh, mycobacterium cancers, okay? Then we have those kind of mycobacterium that uh, produce the pigmentation of the color, but this is in darkness. In presence of light, they do not do that, but in darkness, they produce the, the pigmentation. So these, are, these ones are called uh, scotochromogens. Example here is like mycobacterium mazugai. Then we had uh, those um, uh, mycobacteria that do not produce this pigment, regardless of whether you expose them to darkness or to light, and they are called non-chromogens, okay? Um, so even mycobacterium tuberculosis actually belong to this uh, classification. Okay, so enough with the classification and looking at the disease. Um, so we're just glazing through the most common diseases, and there are more than 50 uh, species of mycobacterium. We've just looked at some of them. Uh, but 80% of all diseases that are caused by mycobacterium are normally of respiratory nature. However, some can affect the bone, uh, the lymph nodes, and other parts. So um, uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, we know, causes TB. Okay, that is tuberculosis, the pulmonary type. But we can also have extra pulmonary TB, which affects other parts like the bone. Then we can have myco, uh, African, uh, mycobacterium africanum, which causes a milder form of tuberculosis, mycobacterium bovis, which causes tuberculosis in cattle, and but which can also be still transmitted to uh, human beings. Then we have mycobacterium uh, leprae, which actually causes uh, leprosy. Uh, other than that, we also have a typical kind of uh, mycobacterium, what we call the mort, basically mycobacterium other than uh, tuberculosis. Uh, so uh, this includes uh, like uh, mycobacterium avium, mycobacterium xenopi, and consansi. Okay. So in terms of uh, tests, <clears throat> we have so many tests that um, um, have been developed um, because um, some of the diseases like TB um, have been there for quite some time. Okay. They're very old diseases that have been described for a long time. So we have had uh, very many laboratory investigation tests that have been developed. But anyway, the specimens that are needed mostly, most of the time, is the sputum uh, specimen. And normally we take three examples of this. If we, they are children, then um, we basically do gastric lavage, uh, but you can also take uh, past samples and even uh, urine samples for this. Um, then these samples can be cultured or they can use an acid fast bacilli test, what you call the Zen, uh, the Zen uh, Nelson, uh, Nelson test. Then we can do a mantle test, which is a purified protein derivative test, or basically what we call the tuberculin test, okay? Uh, so the whole concept of an acid fast bacilli test, which is the Zn uh, staining, Zn comes from the two people actually who, uh, who discovered this test or first described it. That is Zale and Nelson. <clears throat> so this is called an acid fast because um, this kind of, uh, this bacteria, once it is stained by the primary stain, uh, we cannot actually remove, we cannot actually decolorize it by the acid itself. Therefore, it does not pick uh, the counter stain, okay? So the primary stain, which is a uh, carbon fusion, basically, which is pinkish in color, um, is actually the one that will be able to see at the end of it because it is we are not able actually to decolorize um, to decolorize the primary stain with an with alcohol or acid. 